what did you think when Roly Romero came here on the last day and said he is coming for Errol Spence at 147 and going to take you out? He a nut. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lost at an old man, so he need, a rem- <laughs> he need a rematch him, man. <laughs> hey, man, it looked too good, man. The ref really helped him out, man. They need it. They it, man. And that ref used it. He's good. He's yeah. a good ref, but... Yeah. That old man was on his ass. He was. <laughs> he was on his ass. Was. I was like, man, he gonna lose to somebody's grandfather, man. God damn. Oh God, I, God, yeah, I was like, he gonna lose somebody's grandfather. Oh my God. This man. He oh. dropped him and everything. I said, I, I was felt like he in trouble. <laughs> oh my God, I'm always ready for that. Errol Spence finally responds to Roly Romero calling him out, saying he wants to move up to welterweight to fight him. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I am back with some more boxing. Now, shout out to everybody. I haven't been going live, but I've got all the cash apps. My dude, Tucker Worthington. A lot of you guys sent cash apps, PayPal donations. I see y'all. I'm just working, and I'm going to continue to grow the channel. I'm one person, but I got a lot in store. We're going to close the year very strong. That being said... The clip you heard at the beginning was Errol Spence with Brian Custer. He had a sit-down interview during the press tour. They did a two-city press tour, L.A. Shout out to all my folk in L.A. and New York. And that was for the Spence-Crawford fight. And you heard Errol Spence. He was kind of jovial. And he was asked by Brian Custer, what about Roley Romero, champion at 140, calling you out? Errol Spence immediately kind of doused that flame and said, you know, you got old man problems he fought a dude that looked like somebody grandpa and, and i was about to say he's he's losing to somebody bad grandpa i i think errol spence low-key is one of the funniest boxers i don't think people always understand but his, he's funny like if you look at some of the snarky comments and the stuff he makes he be making stuff but it, it's just like low-key he, he's kind of it's, it's hard to explain but he's not like very outright but he'd be saying like little snarky things and little subtle jabs and stuff like on twitter and you got to just pay attention because he, he's a funny guy but he's laughing at roly saying that i'm not even worried about roly roly barely beat that old man now the old man he's talking about is barroso barroso many people thought you know the fight was a premature stoppage for whatever reason errol spence even said Tony Weeks, the referee's normally a good referee, but he didn't understand what was going on right there. A lot of people thought it was a premature stoppage, and Barroso, who was winning, I believe, on the scorecards of the judges and in a lot of the spectators' eyes, he didn't really get a fair shake because it's the first sign of danger when Roley landed a significant shot being a power puncher. You know, Roley threw a sequence of shots. Most were blocked or missed. And for some reason, Tony Weeks looked at that as if that's it. I've seen enough. And that doesn't really make sense. Now, speaking of premature stoppages, I I did make a separate video, so I'll address it since we're on the subject. Julian J. Rock Williams. I watched this whole fight with Carlos Adamas. It was a fun fight. Showtime main event. I watched Erickson Lubin and Luis Cuba Arias. But as far as the main event... I had no problem with J-Rock being stopped. Here, were, There were two points. A lot of people I seen, and I just, you know, let people have their own opinion, but I seen a lot of people were up in arms and saying, oh, this was unfair, and uh, Breadman went off on the referee, said he's a POS, and this was an A-side decision. Listen, I watched the whole fight. J-Rock was hurt throughout the fight, and I think the emotionality of it, a lot of people were just being emotional because... That could be J-Rock's last hurrah in terms of getting these big fights and big opportunities, big paychecks and stuff like that. This was a must win kind of scenario. And I think J-Rock has acquitted himself well. He can fight good and he's on Twitter, things like that. So I think he's just a likable guy and people wanted to see him do well. And people also have this fear of missing out and fear that what if, you know, what if it's some Creed movie Rocky Balboa movie, uh, huh, huh, Drago. You know, it's some kind of Rocky movie where this miraculous comeback will be had. But what I've seen, J Rock was getting hurt throughout the fight. 
and there were a lot of unanswered punches. I know some people were saying, oh, but he threw a jab. I mean, he threw a jab after getting hit with a barrage of shots unanswered in, in retreat, full retreat. The other thing, it wouldn't be so bad if it was just whatever round it got stopped in, but nearly the same sequence happened in round, I think round four. So there, when you have, you have two moments where it looks like you're on the verge of being stopped, even if you don't go down, these are really like 10-8 rounds. J-Rock would have needed a knockout to win, and sometimes you gotta save a fighter if the fighter's too tough for their own good. You know, even the Caleb Plant fight was getting like that with David Benavidez. Late in the fight, it was looking like, uh, you know, maybe you start considering it. But Caleb Plant, he did bite down, but he lost the fight as well. You know, it's, it's hard to make these miraculous comebacks. So I wanted to weigh in on the J-Rock thing since we're talking about Roley and Barroso for more boxing content. Let me know what you guys think. Errol Spence, I thought his reply to Roley was funny. I never took that fight serious because I didn't see it happening. Bigger fish to fry. No pun intended. But like Terrence Crawford is literally fighting him in 30 days or so. So he's not going to be worried about Roley. But I thought it was funny. Worthy of me making a quick video. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you thought. And I'm out. Attention all YouTube content creators. If you follow my channel, you'll know I use TubeBuddy. Take your channel to the next level with TubeBuddy, which is the ultimate tool for your YouTube success. Unlock a world of possibilities, grow your channel, increase your views, and maximize your earnings. Cha-ching! TubeBuddy features powerful keyword research, video optimization, and so much more. TubeBuddy got your back. But wait, there's more! I got a coupon code for you guys, 25% off until June 30th. If you click my link in the description and enter the code 25buddy, I will give you 25% off to buddy to get your YouTube channel jumping. Click my link in the description, enjoy the coupon code, and happy creation.